Kharkiv got hit after we spoke with you yesterday. In fact, you know, it's, you know, in the Michelin Guide, uh, and I like to propose a fourth level, uh, restaurants uh, in war zones that are worth visiting. This feeling as you hear these rockets come down, it's, it just sounds like the Russians are trashing, uh, trashing these Ukrainian cities. In Ukraine, where Joseph Lindsley is, and we understand that uh, Kharkiv got hit after we spoke with you yesterday, Joe. Uh, what happened, and is everything okay today? Well, Bob, good afternoon here from Kharkiv. Uh, uh, you know, I'm speaking to you right now from a, a lively cafe uh, after for what for many was a pretty sleepless night. Uh, I guess you could call these stories of borscht amid bombs. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, you know, people are surrounding, you know, there's people having a nice meal here. Uh, cheerful, talking, smiling. Uh, in fact, you know, you know, in the Michelin Guide, uh, one star means uh, a good, a great restaurant. Two stars means uh, worth a detour. Three stars means worth a very special journey. And I like to propose a fourth level: uh, restaurants uh, in war zones that are worth visiting. And um, <laughs> that, that, that's where I say where I, where I am now. Uh, this place is called Trapichna. It means three ovens, and it began as a volunteer hub. Uh, in the first hours uh, of the war. And, and it was just young people that had worked in restaurants, and they said, how can we help, um, uh, you know, ha- help make food for the soldiers? And then they realized they were great chefs. And so now it's a restaurant, and all the money they earn, uh, they use to, uh, to, to buy. In fact, they just bought a Mitsubishi truck uh, for soldiers at the front lines. And I'm told, uh, Makita, the owner here, tells me that uh, when soldiers, when they get a few days for, uh, break from the fighting, uh, they come here. They can't wait to come here and get some nourishing soup that they're dreaming about when they're in the trenches. Uh, wow. And so here we do see, you know, again, how, uh, you know, Ukrainians continue to innovate and, and to and, and to sort of live a healthy life, uh, even uh, in these in these difficult uh, circumstances, especially like today. Uh, last night, uh, you know, there'd been a sense of apprehension, as we talked about yesterday. And then at around midnight, uh, at least five rockets uh, hit uh, the center and near the center of Kharkiv. Uh, it's thought that these were S-300 missiles. And uh, in fact, one of them was quite close to, to where I was located. Uh, probably the closest it's ever been. Uh, in, you know, the entire building shook. Um, and, it, you know, you, you get this feeling as you hear these rockets come down. It's, it just sounds like the Russians are trashing, uh, trashing these Ukrainian cities, you know, throwing these massive chunks of metal and explosives uh, that are never very precise. And so, and, 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 and you know, where, where I was, you know, it's, it's filled with civilian, uh, you know, apartment buildings. Uh, and, and, and it's, it, you know, there, there's, we still don't have a full accounting of exactly what happened last night, uh, but it was one of the more terrifying uh, nights. Also, there have been reports that, uh, you know, the Ukrainians have gotten much better at, at air defense and that the Russians, of course, are also adapting and that they've been sending, uh, according to some reports, according to Ukrainian officials, Russians have been sending decoy missiles, some missiles that don't have explosives in order, you know, because they're, they're less expensive and they can just throw these at Ukraine in order to preoccupy the air defense system and to make it more difficult for Ukrainians to shoot down uh, the actual missiles that that can cause a lot of damage. Uh, and so so this is we're, we're seeing this kind of escalation here from Russia. And meanwhile, um, in Bakhmut, uh, you know, where the situation is, is, you know, we don't we, it's hard to get a lot of information of what's happening. But there was a massive shelling uh, yesterday. Uh, Ten high rise buildings uh, were partially destroyed. Three private houses and um the Bakhmut City Council was hit as well. Uh, and so that's, uh, you know, we, we, and we've had a few air alarms today. In fact, I was running in, the, in one of the parks here in, uh, in Kharkiv uh, today. And, and it's a park that's been hit a few times by, by a missile. And uh, as, uh, uh, as I was in deep into the park, the air alarm sounded. And that's motivation that's to, to make you run really fast to get out of that park. Yeah, I can I can imagine. I saw a report on NBC last night from Richard Engel, who I think next to you, Joseph, is the best wartime reporter of all time. And he was uh, in a classroom talking to young kids going to school. And it it was heartbreaking uh, to to see what they're going through, to hear the children. And it it was so heroic of of these teachers uh, to be doing what they do there. I mean, it's it's just it, one story after another like that. Well, and that's, you know, when, you, when we talk about stories like that, uh, I saw several headlines today in the past few days uh, that talking about, you know, can there be some deal? Can't, you know, and, and said, uh, one of the headlines said President Zelensky refuses to give up Ukrainian territory, you know, mm-hmm. to negotiate with Russia. But when we see that, 
I think whoever's writing those stories is missing the real reality here. This is not like a game of risk where we're talking about a territory and where it's the government of Kiev versus the government of Moscow. If any territory, any territory that falls into Russian hands becomes a place where people are oppressed, uh, a because you know you, you won't be able to speak Ukrainian, but more than that, you you, you know Russia is not a free country. Ukrainians love freedom; they love freedom of speech. Uh, they're very, I mean, that's really what this is about. And so, any territory that you know it, it could, would, it fell into Russian hands, uh, you would be putting so many people, including children, into a horrible situation. Uh, you know, the, the sort of situation that I'm, you know maybe people haven't read enough of history, but you know that happened throughout the Soviet years. You know, th- yeah. those that was not a pleasant time to live uh, in. Uh, you know, behind the Iron Curtain, and that's what we see coming back here. That's what Russia is today, and so uh, that that's why. You know, there, there can be no, you know, there can be no talk of, of, of giving up any territory because that's giving up uh, human lives and uh, the people who want to live in a free and happy society. And President Zelensky said uh, that it would just lead to Russia to keep coming back again and again. The headline that I wanted to ask you about today was really, really frightening. Uh, energy crisis sparked by war could push 141 million into extreme poverty, according to a new report. That is shocking. Well, and I think it's, you know, this is part of as the Kremlin, you know, devises and, and adjusts strategy. You know, they, the, the Kremlin hopes that you know the world will start to suffer in other ways and that people will get tired of this and will say okay you know you, you win uh and and that's exactly you know and that's why i mean for for many years uh before uh last year uh there were you know many critics of the german government saying you have too much reliance on russian energy this is going to cause problems uh this is why you know, there, there's why people talk about energy independence that's actually for, for security reasons and so now, you know, Europe and I hope, you know, we'll see in America, if people are scrambling to find better solutions uh, for energy uh, and electricity uh, so that you're not, uh, you know, you can't so you can't be blackmailed. Uh, and but that's exactly what that's, you know, R- Russia will use. You know, the only goal is to to, to take uh, more territory uh, mm-hmm. and, and, to, and to stop free societies in their neighborhood. And they'll use whatever tactics they can, uh, including uh, making making it painful for people all around the world. And again, that's why the argument is. Of, the, of Ukraine and Ukrainian allies, the more that you might have to spend now, the more quickly this can be resolved uh, and, and the less expensive it'll be uh, in the long run. Mm-hmm. Right. Joseph, I want to leave you on an upbeat note. Uh, let me share this text with you. Bob, uh, thanks to Joseph for his courage in being there and to you for uh, your courage in reporting this atrocity on a daily basis. Joseph needs to go have a week vacation in London or Paris or Rome. I would be the first to donate $100 for, for that cause. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. I think, but I'll stick, I'll go to the mountains maybe for a week and, uh, because uh, as I've heard from people that have left the country here, as, even as soon as they cross the border, you know, if, if, whether it's women who are, who are able to leave or uh, men who are allowed to leave and they have some some work to do, they feel bad. They feel they feel this sense of uh, they, they actually feel happier when they're here in the country uh, because you're surrounded by such a, such a sense of purpose. And and and, you know, that there's some work to be done. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll wait until after victory for that. <laughs> we admire your spirit and those of the Ukrainian people. <laughs> Joseph Lindsley, War Zone uh, restaurant and bar recommendations uh, are always appreciated as well. We <laughs> we got a kick out of that. I hope you have a good weekend, Joe, and we'll talk Monday. Thank, thank you, Bob. Until Monday. Joseph Lindsley, world's most interesting man. This I find in my garden. It's peace from rocket. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. Uh, it's our method that we call the small salads. So salads in Ukrainian language, it's uh, like the fish and uh, it's like the haircut of uh, uh, our ethnic warriors that call Cossacks. Uh, they have things like this. It's called uh-huh. salads also too. All right, it's uh, our also let it, it's our mezza. All right, this one, it's salad from lacto-fermented beetroot uh, with our homemade mayo with garlic, some uh, young cheese, uh, baked carrots, uh, baked beetroots. Uh, it's uh, our homemade young cheese, uh, also some of our mayo. It's uh, kumchi, it's like the twist on Asian salad that called skimchi. Kum in Ukrainian language, it's like godfather. Uh, it's uh, sauce uh, from baked carrots, uh, uh, it's our uh, sour onions and our homemade vinegar and it's our um, 
something like the ethnic Ukrainian hummus from beans and uh, uh, tahina from sunflower seeds and salsas from beetroots. Nice. And Mikita, where are we? Uh, we are in Trupicha. <laughs> <laughs> Proszę.